at it, Adam. Feast thine eyes on a sight that approaches heaven itself. You've been to a lot of places and you've seen a lot of things, Pa. But you've never seen or been to heaven. <laughs> well, maybe I've never been to heaven, maybe I'm never going to get the chance. But heaven is going to have to go some to beat the thousand square miles of the Ponderosa. As long as it's ours. As long as we keep it in Cartwright hands. Know anyone who could take it away from us, son? I know those who would try. That Virginia City bunch, if we gave them half a chance. Now, where's little Joe? He's supposed to have met us here. I want a report of those cattle he was supposed to bring down from the north end. Oh, you'll get it, son. You uh, might have to wait until he's ready to give it to you. I want that report now. Well, maybe the best thing for you to do is go find him. I intend to do just that, Bob. Horse will know where he is. Adam. Remember he's your brother. A brother or not, I expect him to do his share, same as the rest of us. He's a boy, son. Not a man like you. Only thing wrong with him, he's young. Well, young or not, he's still a cartwright. <laughs> Abner, you stand real still now, you hear? You listen to horse. Fidgeting and fussing around here like that. He'll throw you plumb into the next county. You think I can't do it, mister? You just keep on that juggling. Be flying through there like you was more prairie hen than your horse. You giving you any trouble, horse? Oh, Pa. You know there ain't no four-legged animal won't give me any trouble. Oh, I know that, sir. No, any two-legged one either, for that matter. Well, I don't know. I remember one little two-legged animal didn't weigh an ounce over 100 pounds, with red hair and all. She didn't give me nothing but trouble. Well, I wasn't thinking of any girl, son. I was thinking of your younger brother. Little Joe? Mm-hmm. Adam's up the house talking to him now. You got nothing better to do than play with that. Never know when I might want to use it. What chance are you going to have to use an epee out here in the West? What I always say is, older brother, if a man ever gets that chance, he best be ready for it. Stand still when I'm talking to you. You're a Cartwright. Do you know what that means? No, older brother. I'm waiting for you to tell me. All right, I'll tell you. It means you're supposed to be a man now, fit to do a man's work. It means you got part of the responsibility of running this ranch, same as Pa and Horse and me. I didn't think I could handle it, same as you. I quit. And how do you expect to do it with that uh, New Orleans monkey pick you got handed down to you by your French Quarter mother? If you weren't my brother, Adam, I'd kill you for that. Well, any time you're ready, little Joe, you can just forget all about us being kin. Well, you know, that'll be easy. Because I've never been able to see myself being kin to anything whelped out of a thin-nosed, blue-blooded Boston Yankee. to this shame, this disgrace. Paul, oh, they don't hear you. They don't mean no disrespect. It's just they, they're working off a little extra steam, that's all. Don't you worry none, I'll stop them. All right, you boys had enough fun for one day. Let's call it quits. In case you didn't hear me, I said this play acting business is over, and I mean right now. Now you stay out of this horse. It's between me and all the brother here. Little Joe, you better quit before I get mad. Yeah, he'll quit all right, horse. He hasn't the guts to take any man-sized punishment. Oh. Sons, don't we have enough to fight? Must we fight amongst ourselves? Why don't you tell that to him, Paul? 
get anything through that rock-bound New England head of his. Son, are you all right? You're not hurt, lad? I guess the only way to hurt me, Pa, is to kill me. I'm sorry, Adam. I'm sorry I raised my hand to you. Oh, go on, son. It's your brother asking you for forgiveness. All I ask is for him to do his share. We're running the Ponderosa, not playing with an F.A. And that means bringing a thousand head of cattle down from pastures to the bottom land. Those cattle, every last head of them, have been grazing in bottom land since this morning. Don't you josh with me, little Joe. <laughs> oh, boy, that'd be the day anybody tried to josh with you, you Yankee granite head. Joe, you were telling the truth about those thousand head of cattle. Pa, you know he's telling the truth. He ain't no liar, Pa. That the truth, little Joe? That's the truth. How many heads you lose on the way down? Nary one. Nary one. Did you hear that, Adam? A thousand head of prime stock down from a high pasture and he loses nary a one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe, that's, that's wonderful. I only did what any poor boy out of New Orleans would have done without even thinking about it. Well, I, uh, I didn't know I, I'm sorry. <laughs> Up, Sing! Where that devil are you hiding, you celestial sky gazer? You got four hungry men who want to know what's for dinner. Yell, yell. Why you all the time have to yell? Why do I have to yell? <laughs> I go. I go away now. Up, Sing! Wait a minute. Up, Sing! Wait a minute, wait a minute, Hobson. You, you can't do that. Why, if you left here, I'd waste away to the shadow. You know that. You tell the old man he speaks soft, not yell. Then maybe Hobson stay. Paul, oh, I'm powerful hungry. I ain't had but a couple of three breakfasts since morning. Besides, Paul, you know as well as I do, old Hobson's the best dang cook this side of San Francisco. Won't you go ahead and apologize to him? Go on, Pa. Horse is right. He's right, Paul. We never knew what cooking was like till Hop Singh come here. Paul, oh, I sure am hungry, Paul. And I can smell dinner. Hop Singh, very sorry. Very, very sorry. Get a very good dinner. Roast pig. Roast pig? Did you say roast pig, Hop Singh? Roast pig. Very good. Paul, in all your born days, did you ever taste anything that could match old Hop Singh's roast pig? Us. You're going to be able to last till dinner? Well, it ain't going to be easy, Paul. If I don't get something to eat pretty soon, I'm liable to just lay down right here and die. Uh-huh. Well, before anyone lays down and dies, let's remember there's still some work to do down at the corral. Just so happens this ranch don't run by itself. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> You don't think very highly of our plan, do you, Hooper? Look, Troy, this isn't my idea, scheming with an actress. You know what I'd like to do. Everything all right, Miss Brown? <laughs> Take the Ponderosa by storm. You know what that would cost us? Oh, hang the expense. All I want is to get rid of that Cartwright bunch once and for all. Well, I wasn't speaking of the cost in money, Cooper. I was speaking of the cost in human lives. Yes. What are you planning on using, Hooper? The United States Cavalry? The last time we planned an expedition to take the Ponderosa, it cost us over a dozen lives. And Cartwright can assemble 200 of their mountain men within an hour if they have to. Up there in that empire they control, their position's impregnable. As Garvey says, we couldn't get at them with anything less than the U.S. cavalry. All I know is that the Yellow Jacket needs a million board feet of timber a year to keep going. <laughs> well, a Gould and Curry, my dear Hooper, requires three million feet a year. I have a 12-foot-wide vein of pure silver I can't even explore for lack of shoring timber. I don't think I have to be reminded of the seriousness of our problem. Well, I can tell you this. Unless I get timber, I'm out of the mining business. If old Ben would only agree to sell us what we need, I, I'd be willing to pay any price he does. Well, to old Ben Cartwright, a tree is something sacred. Yeah. Something money can't buy. That's ridiculous. Money can buy anything. Can it, Aaron? You nor any of us couldn't make the Cartwright sell us one more sapling than they wanted to. Troy, 
Do you think this girl can really do it? <laughs> well, this girl, as you put it, Miss Lada Crabtree, is one of the most renowned actresses and beauties of our time. Conceivably, she might succeed where the United States Cavalry might fail. Yes, but just by bringing one of his boys to town? By putting into our hands the one thing that would make Ben Cartwright sell us his trees. A son. His mouth, Adam. He's got a spook. He's a fellow about to get himself married. You're all right, Thunder. You're all right, boy. You're right, Adam. I'm all right. Let me go. I had that one coming. Uh, that's too good a piece of horse flesh to ruin by bringing it along too fast. What's that carriage doing on the Ponderosa? Ah! Those fools, they should have known better. Yes, Mr. Cartwright. Put those hands up. If you put them down before you're told, you're dead, mister. If you know who I am, then you know you're on the Ponderosa. I'm sorry about that, but then I guess I must have got lost tracking over them hills. Don't you count out to him, driver, unless you want to answer to me. idea shooting at innocent unarmed people and in broad daylight why if i'd realized that this is the way they treat people in virginia city i never would have come here well this is not virginia city ma'am you're on the ponderosa the ponderosa what's that the ponderosa ma'am that's the home place of the cartwrights they got just about the biggest spread in the country this here is ben cartwright and these is his sons and we don't cotton to strangers male or female what's your business here my business? Am I still in United States territory? Well, that you are, ma'am, but I wouldn't go trading on it too much if I was you. Well, you're not me. And I wish you'd put that awful thing down. Yes, ma'am. Hey, what's the matter with you? Haven't you ever seen a lady before? No, ma'am. I mean, not such a pretty one. Not in a long time. You're still pointing that gun at me, you know. I might still intend to use it. Put it away, son. Maybe they really did lose their way. Well, as long as they get off the Ponderosa. It appears we're going to need some help if you expect us to honor that request. I'll be happy to oblige, ma'am. It's a relief to know that even here, a lady can expect help from a gentleman. 
Little Joe, I think maybe the lady would like a nice cool drink after traveling around in the dust and heat. The lady happens to have a name, gentlemen. Miss Lotta Crabtree. Uh, you mean the famous actress? I mean the very same. Be knee high to a prairie dog. Lotta Crabtree. Miss Lotta Crabtree. Hey, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Little Joe, take Miss Crabtree up to the house. Let her rest herself while we put this fool carriage of hers together again. You expect me to ride this horse? I'll well, see that that man will walk a mile of the house. My pleasure, ma'am. Well, you know, I didn't need any help, older brother. I wasn't helping you, younger brother. Adam, you reckon you're going to get this thing fixed today? You'd like to try? If I did, who'd hold this wagon up? Uh. All right, try that wheel again. See if it'll turn. Bring her in. Yes, sir. All right, now. Get her out of here. Or we'll lose our patience and string you to the nearest tree. Yes, sir. But what about the lady, Miss Crabtree? Uh, how long does it take to get a gal a cool drink of water? Yeah, talking about something to drink. If I don't get something to eat pretty soon, I'm liable to get plumb dangerous. What in fun are you trying to say? Lo speak or dry up. Why you no come eat? Because we had something better to do. You don't mean it's ruined, Hopsy. Or dry up. Follow away. Throw away? Hopsing in by lady, eat a low speak. She say, thank you very much, but she have to go Virginia City. Virginia City? Crazy little Joe. He didn't agree to take her. Take best buggy too. She very pretty lady, <laughs> very pretty. I'm alone. You've got just one minute to tell us all you know about it. I swear I don't know nothing, Mr. Cartwright. That minute's running out fast. Who sent you up to the Ponderosa? Nobody. I mean, I was just hired to drive the lady up around these hills. Was it Alpheus Troy? Was it Alpheus Troy hired you? Talk, man, while there's still a tongue in your head. I couldn't help myself, Mr. Cartwright. I couldn't say no to Troy. I just couldn't help myself. How much did he pay you? went into that town alone. Anyone care to ride into Virginia City with me? Boss. Not into Virginia City, not yet. It's exactly what they want. Just the four Cartwrights. Well, we'll ride in. But we'll have a hundred men riding in after us in the morning if we haven't returned. To alert the men from the North Valley. Adam, you ride out to the settlers on the Tahoe Rim. I'll take care of the men at the sawmill. As soon as we're through, we'll ride into Virginia City. I'll be waiting for you in the Sazerac. <laughs> We don't go back by morning. Kill him. Oh! I think we better let him rest, ma'am. We don't want to get him all tuckered out. I see. It's very considerate of you to drive me, Mr. Cartwright. Well, most people hereabouts just call me Little Joe. Little Joe? Well, you're not that small. I was not that man. It's my brother horse is that big. <laughs> yes, he is. But what kind of a name is that for a man, horse? Oh, he had some other name when he was born. But then when he weighed in at 50 pounds, when he was just a couple of months old, well, people just forgot the other name and started calling him horse. 
50 pounds at a couple of months. Now, that's impossible. Impossible, ma'am? I don't think you'd say that if you could have seen Horst's mother. Isn't she your mother, too? Who, that big gal? <laughs> oh, no. Her pa said she stood six feet tall in her stocking feet and could punch like a mule. <laughs> That's how Paul met her. She threw him two out of three times in a wrestling match. Oh, she didn't. No. no. She's a real beautiful woman. Came from Sweden. Pa said she was like a clean, fresh sunrise. I'm sure she was. Your father was married twice? Oh, more than that. Man. More than that? Yeah, older brother Adam. He's from Pa's first wife. She's the daughter of a New England sea captain. Imagine my pa being married to a Yankee. What's so wrong about a Yankee? Ma'am, if you don't already know, I guess ain't no use my telling you. Mr. Cartwright, when will we ever get to Virginia City? Almost before you know it, ma'am. Ha! Come on! Just snagged the fly. <laughs> Troy, do you uh, do you think Miss Crabtree would appreciate being called a spider? As long as she collects her fee of ten thousand dollars for this special performance, I don't think she cares what she's called. Boogie's yours, ma'am, for as long as you stay in Virginia City. Oh, that's most gallant of you, little Joe. Hope you didn't mind the ride too much, ma'am. I loved it. Fastest twenty miles I've ever experienced. You will stay for my performance, won't you? I don't know what could keep me away. Well, I'll look for you from the stage. After the show, we have dinner together? After the show, you ask me then. what you're going to do. Right. Oh, Miss Crabtree, this is indeed a pleasure. You sent for me, Mr. Troy? I'd have come to you, but I was afraid I couldn't crowd my colleagues in that cramped little dressing room. Uh, Miss Crabtree, I want you to meet uh, Aaron Cooper of the Yellow Jacket. How do you do? Mr. George Garvey of the Diablo. My pleasure, gentlemen. You're famous worldwide. Won't you sit down, please? Oh, well, thank you. Might I add, so is yours. Oh, by the way, uh, congratulations. Congratulations? For what? My performance isn't until later. <laughs> well, let's say for bringing that young man into Virginia City. Oh, is that so difficult? Did you have any doubts? It isn't easy to get a Cartwright to do anything. He was just one young man. Didn't you think I was woman enough to persuade one young man to do my bidding? Oh, enough to do all that, I'm sure. And more. But you see, Miss Crabtree, our task isn't quite finished. What is there left to do, Mr. Troy? We want you to persuade that young man to accompany you to your hotel rooms. After this evening's performance, of course. Of course. Well, how interesting and how unusual. Uh, what do I do then? Make love to him? Oh, no, uh, just keep him there. Talk to him. Do anything but keep him there. He's such a boy. What should we talk about? Talk about his blasted trees. They've got more than a million of them up there on the Ponderosa, and we want them. Trees? You want trees? I thought you were all silver kings. Trees spell timber. And we need timber, Miss Crabtree, desperately, to keep our minds going. You see, the deeper the veins go into the earth, the richer, the purer the silver. But without timber, millions of feet of it, to support our tunnels and our shafts, there's a limit to how deep we can go. Then it appears I've earned my rather exorbitant fee. Get that boy up into your room tonight. 
And you've earned another 10,000. What do you intend to do with him? Hold him as a hostage until Ben Cartwright gives us the right to cut down his trees. And what if Ben Cartwright refuses? The way Ben loves those sons of his, I don't think he'll refuse. I'll expect another 10,000, Mr. Troy. If you promise not to harm that boy. It's a friend, Opling. Put down the war club. Awesome, much happy to see friend. Always happy to see you too, Hopling. How is honorable son, Hop Singh? He cook very good? Oh, very good. Horse loves him like a brother. Ah, so very good son. You come from Virginia City all alone? You take terrible risk. Well, if honorable father just take my horse to the stable, I want to take care of a few little things uptown. You mind, Hop Ling? For a very beautiful lady. to court you, your affections for to gain, and if you'll give me good attention, perhaps I'll come twice more again. What care I for your house and land? What care I for your world of pleasure? All I want is a handsome man. seem to boast on beauty beauty surely will vanish away pick a pretty red rose in the morning and by noon it will fade away <laughs> Cartwright sure didn't waste any time snapping up her invitation. In his place, hmm, I would have done the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you had, it'd have been your last supper, too. Aaron, have you assigned proper men to the task? McCutcheon and Farrell, yellow jacket boys. Excellent. <laughs> Gentlemen, ladies, 
I invite you to partake of the pleasures of my Club Sazerac special. It's open. Come in. Your rose is most beautiful, Mr. Cartwright. Hardly anything, ma'am. Compared to all these. But I don't think any of them could have been given with more admiration or affection. That's rather bold, sir. I might almost say wicked. Well, speaking of wicked, that was a fairly wicked dance you did out there on the stage. You didn't like it? Who, me? Ma'am, I loved every bit of it. As a matter of fact, I... Tell me, Mr. Cartwright. Your mother was the third wife? And the last. What was her name? Felicia. Why do you ask? I don't know. But you must be very much like her. Where did she meet your father? Pa took a business trip down to New Orleans. Guess he made out better than he ever figured he would. New Orleans. I might have known. <laughs> hey, grandpappy served there under the pirate Lafitte. Till he got... You mean to say your grandfather was hanged? How awful. That ain't a bad way to go, ma'am. When you're 82. <laughs> you ever been in New Orleans? New Orleans. I've been there dozens of times. Oh, I'd give anything if I could go to New Orleans. My mother used to tell me about it before she died. I can hardly remember now. I was just a little kid, not even five years old. I know she used to tell me what a beautiful city it was. Yes, a very beautiful city. Very old and very gracious. But we'll talk about that at supper. I got a little place all picked out. Run by a fellow from Paris, France. Come to Virginia City a couple of years ago. And Pan for gold. Then he got so discouraged with the kind of food they dish out around here, he just opened up a little cafe. What's the matter, man? Don't you care for French cooking? I love French cooking. And I love French wine. Here, let me pour you some. Very good health, monsieur. What is it? They call it champagne. It's the only thing I drink. It tastes pretty feeble to me. Hmm. Mm. It'll catch up with you. <laughs> but then at $50 a bottle, it should. $50? Well, this stuff's expensive. Everything I have is expensive. My hats, my shoes. My furs, my gowns, everything. And money must be very important to you. The most important thing in the world. That's what enchants me so about Virginia City. I can watch them dig it here, right out of the ground. <laughs> you don't know how hard I've worked. How many years it's taken to be able to buy the kind of champagne we're drinking now. your father let them cut down those trees. They'd be willing to pay anything he asked. The trees? Who wants to know about the trees? Th they need those trees. Without those trees, they can't keep their minds going. And without those trees, we can't keep the land going. Are you expecting any visitors, ma'am? I suppose you know what I've done, don't you? Where is 
is he? Where's my son? May I ask you, Mr. Cartwright, to address whatever questions you may have to my friend, Langford Poole. Mr. Poole, as you well know, boasts 12 notches on his gun. Would you care to try for 13? Go home, Cartwright. Go home for I kill you. You tell me to go home? You, with the smell on you of the charnel house, of flesh rotting and stinking in the sun? You gonna die for saying that to me, old man. You gonna die. You have any argument, Poole? You don't have it with my father. You have it with me. One Cartwright is just about the same to me as another. asking you again. Where's my boy? I... I don't know. I don't know where he is. We looked all over town, Pa. There's no trace of him. Troy, the Lord saith an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. I want my son, Troy. My son for your life. You think that brat of yours is in Virginia City, Ben Cartwright? All right. Find him. I'll find him. With that actress, once I know where she is. You know that, Troy? You know where she is. Now tell me, or I'll rattle your teeth. At the hotel. The International House. I'll find him, Pa. Boss, you stay here and help Pa keep him seated right where they are. If I don't come back with little Joe, we'll ask some more questions. They'll be here when you get back at them. One shape or another, but they'll be here. Yes, ma'am, you sure got expensive tastes. Like the champagne stuff, hats, gowns, and furs. I guess you didn't have much choice. But you have. They'll kill you, little Joe. You can get out through the window. Please, before it's too late. Ma'am, I thought we had a supper date together. Gentlemen, may I say that your visit isn't entirely unexpected? You get out of here! ma'am. You're a sweetheart. I'm so happy to see you. Are you? Where's my brother? He was here. I'm sorry, Adam. I, 
I didn't think this was going to happen. But what you thought or think doesn't interest me, Miss Crabtree. You're hurting my arm. I'll break it. Where's the kid? You don't understand. Understand what? You and Alpheus Troy. You don't think much of me, do you? On the contrary. I think you did your job beautifully. It's not everyone that could lure a young fool kid to his death. That isn't true. I didn't know they wanted to hurt him. Th they said it would just be a little trick, a sort of a game. Could I go up into the mountains and make one of you follow me back to town? And for how much money? Money didn't have anything to do with it. Didn't you just hear me say it was a little game, a sort of a lark? Oh, I heard you. It doesn't mean I have to believe you. Oh. Let go of me. Get your hands off me! Next time, Miss Crabtree, pick on a man, not a boy. <laughs> Later, I'll wait if I live that. All this time trouble. He's around here somewhere. We'll go through every shack and tent till we can find him. Where is he? Where are you hiding him? That's a big hell. Well, if he's here, we'll find him. Wait! Oh, man. Thank you for keeping me alive. Of course, one day you may regret it, you know. Where is he? Did you find him? No, I didn't find him, Pa. I got his horse outside. Found it at the stable. He's still in town. We'll go on looking for him, Alpheus Troy. And if we don't find him... Try that one next. Inside basket, I cover close. Hey, you got anybody hiding in here? Hide somebody? No, nobody. Me hide nobody. Oh, what's the use? Let's turn this place inside out. Why? 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 No washi. You lied to What did you mean? All the 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 the
Is this what you've been doing all night? All night, Pa? I, uh, I thought I was just getting started. It's a great pleasure, Mr. Cartwright. Out! Out, you little rapscallion, before I, before I skin you alive! as I have promised, O Winnemucca. The cattle are in the small canyon. Your people are grateful. Take them quickly, if the Cartwrights come. Cartwrights are here. You know what happens to cattle thieves? Shoot, Ben Cartwright! Shoot! I gave you a good life on the Ponderosa. Do you repay me by stealing my cattle? Do not blame my brother. He but did the word of his chief. How long have the Paiutes been cattle thieves? Since the Washoe antelope and deer are gone. Since the pinion tree burns in the fires of Sun Mountain. Since our women and our children and our braves sit hungry in our tents and sicken without food. What say you, Winnemucca? The Washoe antelope herds have fed the Paiute since the long ago dream time. The diggers of Sun Mountain eat antelope, while the pots of the Paiute are empty. They are but three head, the weakest of the Ponderosa herd. Tukwa cannot see his people starve. 
What's the matter with you, Tuqua? Did the Cartwrights let the Paiute starve? Why didn't you ask us? The Paiute is a man. He does not beg. Even now, Winnemucca is called woman by my young men around the council fires. Winnemucca is no woman. He thinks of his people. The ways of peace are good ways. But because the Paiute loves peace does not mean he cannot make war. War brings nothing but wailing in tents and lodges, Winnemucca. For the Paiute and the white man, you and I understand these things. Does Ben Cartwright disregard the voices of his sons? Even so, Winnemucca hears the words of his young men. They speak for war. They see as I see, that the Paiute walks the same trail as the antelope, and the antelope is dead. The men who dig in the earth are new to Washoe, Winnemucca. They do not know the ways of the land. My sons and I, we will ride to them and make them understand. They will listen. The Cartwrights and the Paiutes have long walked the earth together. But if there is war, Ben Cartwright, even the men of the Ponderosa can die. There will be no war, and no more antelope will die. I will see to it. Tukwa always speaks the truth. They must indeed be the weakest cattle of our herd. For our friendship, would you drive them off the Ponderosa? Help you people, Tukwa. Virginia City's full of fools. You think even fools would know you can't push Indians around? All they were thinking about was food. Well, food is one thing. Destroying the balance of nature is another. To keep this up, the whole of Washoe will become a desert. I saw it happen at John Sutter's California. All right, let's go. Where, Paul? Virginia City. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Adam, you see that little gal smile at me? Oh, what makes you think it's you she was smiling at? You know, every time I come in here, I gotta get used to it all over again. Remember when this was nothing more than a jackrabbit run? Yeah. I don't know what I like jackrabbits better, little Joe. Ooh. All right, you two country boys get your fill of the city. Adam and I will take a little look around. Stop. Hey, horse, you ever see anything like this in your whole life? Yeah. I seen a stampede last fall up in Silver Meadow. The only difference was the stampede made more sense. Come on before you take root. Looks good, Mo. Yeah, move over. Wish boy. there was more. Guess we've seen it all now. The good and the bad. That's what they call striking it rich. Looks like all they've struck so far is bad luck. Pretty rough on young ones like that. Howdy. Howdy. It's not much of a meal for grown boys. That ain't much of a meal for anybody, but that's my business, ain't it? Well, no offense intended, Mr. Harris. Carl Harris. This is my wife and my boys. Hello. Howdy. Howdy. You know, Mr. Harris, you could be feeding those boys beef. Yeah, if I had wings, I could fly, too. <laughs> Mr. Harris, we're the Cartwrights from the Ponderosa. Now, there's plenty of beef in the valley. Uh, I reckon so. All I can do to fork over $10 a pound for that skinny antelope, I couldn't afford beef. You pay $10 a pound? And lucky to get it. A man come through last week selling salt pork for $15 a pound. 
At least this meat is fresh. We aren't starving, mister. We take care of ourselves. Well, I'm sure you do, ma'am. You don't have to pay those prices. Well, we market our steers over to Placerville for $25 a head. We'd be making money selling them to you for $20. $20? That's right. Are you joking me, mister? They're yours if you want them. All you have to do is come over to the Ponderosa and drive them away. Woo! <laughs> I couldn't do much better than that back home in Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky, you're a long way from home. I got tired of seeing my family starve on 40 acres of rock. Now, I figured if we had to starve, we might as well do it somewhere where there's a chance of striking it rich. Well, yeah. nobody's going to starve, but we have cattle to sell. Now, get yourself some men together and come over to the Ponderosa. Well, by golly, we'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you hear that, woman? Mm. We're going to eat ourselves some beef. Oh, here I am acting like a Yankee. <laughs> come on in, have a cup of coffee. Uh, Mr. Harris, you sure don't know anything about us Yankees. Your Yankees? <laughs> Oh, I didn't mean oh, it. Come on in, have some coffee. Howdy, <laughs> Connie. Hey, where'd you come from? You're cute. Hey, now wait a minute. Lady, you just mind your own business. <laughs> Stuff your eyes back in your head. They're about to pop out. You know, horse, I could have a good time if you weren't here. Yeah, and get yourself into a pack of trouble, too. Hey, look at that, little Joe. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Hurry up. Let's go. Antelope meat, $10 a pound. Yeah. Looks like we're raising our own kind of stock, don't we? Come on. Let's go. Come on. Here, let me try a little, Joe. Excuse me, man. Excuse me. Excuse me. They must be out of their minds. How so, friend? Always like to hear the other fellow's side of things. $10 a pound for antelope meat. That makes sense to you? It depends on your point of view. You see, that happens to be my antelope meat they're buying. Coyotes might argue with you about that. <laughs> I haven't seen you boys around. Are you staking out in Virginia City? Mark Burdett's the name. Joe Cartwright. It's my brother, Hoss. I'm pleased to meet you. Say, he's a big fellow, isn't he? Boys, do you have any idea how many people are heading toward Virginia City right now? Thousands. Yes, sir, thousands. And every blessed one of them with a belly he's got to fill. Gonna be a bunch of them, huh? Yeah, ever since they found out about that blue stuff being silver, which assays at better than $3,500 a ton, they're heading here from all over the world. Silver? All that time Comstock and those other fellows were checking it away, thinking only about gold. Gold? Virginia City's gonna be a hundred times the strike the mother load ever was. Now, let me tell you something, boys. There's more than one way to strike it rich. Man can live without whiskey and women and clothing, even shelter. But if he doesn't eat, he dies. Hey, little Joe. What are you Bob. doing here? Bob, I'd like you to meet Mark Burdett. He owns this place. How proud to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. Howdy. It's my brother, Adam. Adam? Howdy. You've got a good thing here, haven't you? Well, it takes a businessman to know a good business, Mr. Cartwright. Is that what you call it? I could think of another name. <laughs> you boys sound as if you want to talk. Well, one thing you'll find out about me, I'm always ready to oblige. This way, gentlemen. Here we are. Not very much, but it's a beginning. What I say is, let them have their silver as long as I can sell them their meat. You're charging pretty fancy prices for that meat. Well, it's the only meat in town, Mr. Cartwright. It cost me a lot to get it. Well, I will have cost you a lot more. Mister, you went out and butchered the meat supply of the whole Paiute Nation. You're risking an Indian war. Oh, come now, friend. I have nothing against the Indians. What I always say is, fair game is fair game. Hey, Pa, why don't we sell some of our stock to Mr. Bedette here? And the Paiutes can have the antelope to themselves again. What stock are you talking about, son? Don't you know about the Ponderosa? We got more prime Joe. cattle than... You have. Real prime beef east of the Sierras. I'll tell you what I'll do, Mr. Cartwright. I'll take all you've got. You can name your own price. 
If you charge $10 a pound for antelope meat, what will you be charging for beef? All I can get. If you think that's out of line, take a look in the saloon and see what rot gut whiskey's going for. Or a bag of flour, or a pick and shovel. I just saw the last sight of antelope, Mr. Burdett. We're out of business. Not yet, Thorne. These gentlemen are the Cartwrights from the Ponderosa Ranch. Prime beef cattle as much as you want. My assistant, Early Thorne. How are you, gents? Well, do we do business? Why not, Pa? We're in the business to sell cattle. Mr. Burdett, we have our own way of doing business on the Ponderosa. We pay an honest day's wages for an honest day's work. And we expect the same in return, nothing more, nothing less. You referring to us, mister? It's all right, Thorne. Now, let's be honest, friends. I need your cattle. I'm willing to pay you the best price you'll ever get. I have a cold storage tunnel out there full of ice from the Sierras. It's the only ice in town. If you're going to sell in Virginia City, you'll have to sell to me anyhow. I say, let's get together. We'll both clean up. We ain't hurting for customers, Mr. Burnett. Any miner in town can come up to the Ponderosa and buy all the meat he needs. And we don't intend to profit from his hunger. Profit from their hunger? You think I was twisting those fellows' arms to get them in here? Every minute they can spare, they use to dig for silver. I'm doing them a service. My son is right. The Ponderosa is a business. But there's more involved here than profits. I'm sorry, Mr. Burdett. No deal. Why not? I'm offering you top dollar. And charging top dollar to people who can't afford to pay. Maybe you need to take them down a peg. <laughs> Don't be foolish, mister. I told you about your temper. I'm sorry about this, gentlemen. But we can't let it interfere with our negotiations. Our negotiations are over. I want to warn you again. Stop slaughtering the wild herds. If you don't want a war on your hands, you'll follow this advice. The pirates can be unpleasant. <laughs> Kill me one of them cut rights. So what are you going to learn? There's more than one way of getting what you want. Are you sure, Mr. Burdett? I'm sure. They'll sell to me before I'm through, or they'll never sell cattle to anyone else. City. Sure is growing up, ain't she? Surely is, Mr. Harris. Now, this place is busier than a nest of hornets. Where are you fixing to go? Oh, uh, I got a little digging to do up Six Mile Canyon. You know, back in Cane Tuck, I never thought that I'd be living on a mountain of solid silver. <laughs> kind of takes a, a man's mind off other things, though. What about them cut rates? There they are. Now, don't you let it take your mind off those cattle. You get some people together and come on over first thing in the morning, we'll fix you up. By golly, I'll do that first thing in the morning, and I want to thank you all. That's a real neighborly thing to do. I bet them two boys make mighty good help when he comes digging, don't they, Mr. Harris? We sure do. Yeah, well, they'll be even better when we get a little beef on their bones. Well, we'll see you. Bye, boys. You heard what they're fixing to do? Sure. The cart rights are going to sell beef direct to the miners. That'll wreck us, Burdett. They could if those cattle reach Virginia City. Well, you stop them? Well, let's just say I don't look with favor upon any unnecessary competition. If anyone's looking for me, Thorne, tell them I'm investigating the pleasures of the bucket of blood. Right. Buy me a drink, won't you? How did you guess? I suppose I just have a knack for certain things. Uh -huh. I'm sure you have. Oh, um, isn't there some kind of a rule about women frequenting saloons? Oh, well, didn't you know? This is Virginia City. Anything goes. Exactly my sentiments. Not you. Well, it isn't exactly the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, but it'll have to do. The name's Glory De Lacey, and it's all right. I've been in here before. Oh, then you'll know what kind of whiskey to order. It's all one kind. Black gut. Now, let's see if you're right. A bartender, a bottle of your very finest. Why is it that a new mining camp always has the worst kind of whiskey? And the worst kind of women? That wasn't what I was thinking. 
What were you thinking? That you are the only really beautiful thing I've seen in Virginia City. Why haven't I seen you before? Just got in town a few days ago. Well, let's celebrate. Thank you. What's your name? Burdett. Mark Burdett. To glory of the Comstock load. To the Comstock load. They say it'll be the biggest and richest strike in history. A bonanza. A real bonanza. And I'm going to get my share of it. You're not exactly dressed for the part. Hmm? Oh, you don't think I mean to dig for it like those fellows over there? No. There's more than one way of panning for silver. Yeah, I know. Well, I didn't mean it that way. Why are you here? The excitement of a new camp. I don't know. Maybe the hope that this one will be it. Anyway, there's nothing left in California. This is going to be the biggest thing that ever happened. Make California look sick. I can feel it. And this time, I mean to get my share of it. How come you never made it in California? Smart man like you. Uh, maybe I wasn't smart enough. Come to think of it, I could ask you the same question, couldn't I? <laughs> don't. To the future. When we both have what we want, do you care to drink to it? As long as you're buying the drinks, Mr. Bidet, I'll drink to anything. You're going to be rich, the richest man in town. He's wishing you luck. What I mean to say is that from now on, I don't want anyone else buying you drinks. You mean you want to take care of everything? I'm going to take care of everything. Ready? 40, 60, 80, 100 dollars, Mr. Cartwright, and I sure want to thank you. Well, you can have more cattle if you want. Uh, that's pretty near all we can afford right now, but as soon as I get a dozen more feet down to my diggings, I'll come back and buy your whole ranch. <laughs> hey, there comes old Tuqua. Thought he's supposed to be up on the rim. He's riding like this in trouble. Anything wrong, Tuqua? More new diggers, Ben Cartwright. Too many. Like the trees of the forest. He ain't fooling you there, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> I'll bet there ain't a hard rock man left in California, unless he's too sick to walk. <laughs> man who chased the mirage. Maybe so, maybe not. But somebody's going to hit it over there to Virginia City, and nobody knows who yet. <laughs> well, my boys, I got him. Thanks again, and just wait till them women see a square meal walking in on the hook. <laughs> Bye. What's the matter, Pop? Those newcomers from California. Adam, you double the riders in the rim. We'll start losing cattle. I go back, tell them. Now you've had a hard ride. You've gone up to Steamboat Springs camp for a while. I'll put another man up on the rim. Probably could have got a lot more than $20 a head for those cattle. We made a fair profit. That's all the Ponderosa asks. Hey, well, what about the other ranchers? I spoke to the other settlers. They won't boost up their prices. What are you owing more money for anyhow, little Joe? You ain't going no place. <laughs> <laughs> Steak tonight. Get ready. Remember, I'll take care of the ones to be left alive. Shoot! 
kids. What are we going to tell the kids? It's all over town, Thorne. Fever's running high against the Indians. Did you have to kill that way? Them cattle didn't get to Virginia City, did they? All right, they didn't, but you could have stopped short of murder. You know any other way, Mr. Burdett? The Cartwrights would have come around out of up the price until they had no choice. Someday you're going to learn it takes more than money to make a real killing. Thorne, you're a monster. I never should have taken up with you again. You need me, Burdett. Remember, we have a murder charge hanging over us back in St. Louis. Or did you forget about that prison guard I killed so you could get to be a free man again? There you are, three kings. All right, boys, party's over. We got some more work to do. I thought we'd done enough, Thorne. No, our job's only half done. There's still the other half. Yeah, what's that? Town is plenty riled up against the Indians for killing them miners. Well, they're getting the posse together to go after them. Yeah, I know. That's why we got to get the Indians stirred up against the miners. That way, we put the Cartwrights plumb in the middle. And what's on your mind? Killing us in Paiutes. For having massacred those poor, hard-working miners. Why don't we let the posse go after them? Because the posse might stop long enough to ask questions, and I don't like questions. You mean, like, who really killed those miners? <laughs> What's the idea? I told you I don't like questions. Now, you really are smart, aren't you, Thorne? Smart enough to know a dead man can't talk, even to a pussy. What's the name of that Indian that works for the Cartwrights? Did you hear me? Tukwa. Tukwa. All right, boys, let's get moving. We got to get to him before somebody else does. Get your hat. <laughs> diggers from Sun Mountain. Some of my people saw them as they drove the cattle toward the waters. Are you sure, Winnemucca? The Paiute does not lie. The diggers kill the deer and the antelope. They cut down the pinion tree, and the Paiute has no bread. And now he cuts down my young men. It's like California all over again. Whatever they touch, they kill. How would anybody want to kill Tukwa? Vengeance, some strange notion of vengeance. It just don't make sense, Paul. Them miners is all killed with bullets. Pie would use arrows. I guess he didn't have much chance to tell them that. What will my young men say when I tell them of their brother's murder? You must keep them in hand, Winnemucca. Let the Ponderosa find the men who did this. I am an old man leading a thousand stallions. Today I can stop my young braves. I do not know if I can tomorrow. We will return for Tukwa. Now, let's find out who did this. I know. Who? Mark Burdett. Wait a minute, Anna. Don't you think you're pushing this a little bit? I know you don't like Burdett, but you heard Winnemucca say some miners did this. Burdett's no miner. At the moment, he's the only man who stands to make a profit by starting trouble between the ranchers and the miners, not to mention the Indians. Pa, we've got nothing to go on. If we listen to Adam, we may ride into Virginia City and hang an innocent man. Well, he has a point there, Adam. We have no proof. You've met Burdett. How much proof do you need? Enough to know that we've got the right man. But why don't you let me go into Virginia City and snoop around, see what I can pick up? Alone? Sure, if we all go in together, everyone will see us. 
I go in by myself, I won't be noticed. Might not be a bad idea, Paul. Well, maybe. Now, now, you take care of yourself, little Joe. Don't let Burdett sell you a half interest in his business. Might not be a bad investment. Little Joe, maybe I want to ride in with you, huh? Of course, I'd be less noticed if I rode down the main street with a couple of wild steers. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll take care of myself. Not anybody, even a man like Mr. Burdett, chew down innocent men just for a few dollars. Not just a few dollars, Hoss. A bonanza. <laughs> I just rode in alone. He's taking quite a chance, isn't he, riding into Virginia City alone? Especially if word gets around that the Cartwrights are siding with the Paiutes. What do you think would happen to him if it did? Who knows? Almost anything. I wouldn't want him hurt bad. I have a feeling that Joe Cartwright and I are going to be friends. Yeah, good friends. Talking to me, mister? Yeah, I'm talking to you, you murdering little skunk. Side with those murdering thieving Paiutes. Paiutes? Somebody get a rope. No, don't do it. He didn't do anything. Let him go. Let him go. He didn't do anything. Let him go. 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 Let yeah, so what? So on your fire. I don't want to see you around my place anymore. Here we go. Take him into my office. Well, yeah, open up. Let him through. What is this? Anybody want to argue about anything? Did I hurt you? Oh, I don't think you could hurt me, ma'am. I don't understand. Those miners out in the street, they wanted to hang me. Why? You don't know? Well, the miners sent two groups out to buy cattle. One of them went down to your place. Yeah, that's right. We sold them about a half dozen ahead. And the other went from Gold Hill down toward Carson. They found both groups murdered. Cattle were gone. What makes them think it was the Paiutes? One of the miners, a man named Harris, managed to stay alive. He recognized one of the Indians, a fellow called Tukwa. That's a lie. Easy, Joe. He said it, not me. Anyway, that's why this Tukwa is dead. They would have hung him anyway. Tukwa's not that kind of a man. He'd never take a part in anything like this. Mr. Bedette, you helped me out there in the street. I, I kind of think of us as friends. You can believe me about Tukwa. No, I don't want to believe it. Drop it. Drop it? What do you mean? What I said. It's all over now. This Indian, whatever his name was. His name was Tukwa. All right, that's Tukwa. Anyway, he's dead now, and he deserved to die. He took part in that massacre. But he didn't, Mr. Burdett. Not Tukwa, I know. How do you know? Young fool, how do you know? I told you, he was identified. Yeah, that's right. You told me. Thanks for the help. You fella buy you a drink someday, man? Do you know where to find me? I'll find you. Pretty nice to that kid. That's my job, being nice to people. The paying customers, you mean? He wasn't a paying customer. And you are, aren't you, Mr. Bidette? 
You bought me three drinks. Or was it four? I didn't count. Look, what's bothering you? You, if you want to know. What about me? I don't want you fooling around with anyone else, do you hear? I told you I'm going to be the biggest man in this town. <laughs> then God have mercy on this town. I'm sorry, Gloria, I didn't mean that. I'm glad you did it. Because now I don't owe you a thing for those three drinks. Well, what's bothering you? You act as though I've done something wrong. What have I done? I'm not sure. But if it's what I'm thinking... What are you thinking? That maybe, just maybe, it was you who ordered that massacre. No, that isn't true. You heard about Harris identifying Tukwa? I heard you identify him, Mr. Burdett. I didn't hear anything else. I didn't hear Mr. Harris say anything. Well, there he is now. About time. Where have you been? We were worried about you. Sit down and eat and tell us what you found out. Little Joe, what did they do to you, boy? What happened to your face? Forget it. Who did it? Now, hold still a minute. Now, who did it? Some miners in Virginia City. I said, forget it. They beat you like this? They'd have hanged me if Mark Burdett hadn't stopped them. Hanged you? For what? Being a friend of the Paiutes. They saw Tuqua riding with the men who staged that massacre. That's a lie. Yeah, that's what I tried to tell him. But what good it did me. Who's the one who identified Tukwa? The only one that came out of it alive, that fella named Harris. Adam, what are you up to? I'm gonna have a little talk with our friend Harris. Oh, wait, don't ride in there alone. We'll go with you. <laughs> Where have you been? I'm staying away. After all, you fired me. Don't be funny. You look worried, Burdett. Don't remember seeing you look that way before. You're saying things. There isn't anything I can't handle. Sure, sure. <laughs> like that girl I seen walk out of here? That one uh, named Glory? Uh, why do you mention her? She doesn't have anything to do with it. Oh, she don't, huh? Well, I'm real glad to hear that. I just seen her going out to the Harris place. The Harris place? Suppose Harris tells her the truth. I thought you and me came to Virginia City to strike it rich. Not stretch a rope. Anybody ever find it? Michael. You want anything here? You're Mrs. Harris, aren't you? Yes, I'm Mrs. Harris. I'm pleased to know you, ma'am. I'm glad. I know who you are. What do you want here? I'd like to see your husband. My husband? You know my husband? No, but I must talk with him. It's very important. was hurt out there, he does nothing but stare at the ceiling. Sometimes he talks, but mostly just stares. Carl? There's somebody here who wants to talk to you. A woman. Mr. Harris. There's something I've got to know about that Indian attack. I thought I was doing the best thing. 
coming out west. Better myself. We were worse off here than we were back home. Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris, I've got to know about that Indian attack. What do you want to know? That Indian. The one that rode for the Cartwrights. The one they called Tukwa. Did you see him during the attack? I don't even know who he is. Then you couldn't have identified him, could you? I couldn't identify anybody. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. I sure hope your luck changes for the better soon. Goodbye, boys. I sure hope you find that gold. We will. We just got to keep on digging, though. She's pretty. Hey, Mike, keep digging. All right. What are they doing to her? I don't know. We won't hurt you, Glory, but you better go with us. Oh! oh don't you ever hit her again. Who's going to stop me, Burdette? You? They're hurting her. Ma! Ma! Mike, why are you doing Ma. this? Keep what is it, Marco? They're hurting her. Who? The way you just left the house. Oh, they've taken that girl away. I gotta get to town, get help. It was just a bare rock farm. Man had to take a chance. His wife, his boys. Huh. You boys stay here in case your pa needs something. Harris? We'd like to have a talk with your husband. The girl. They've taken the girl. The girl? What girl? I don't know her name. She works in the saloon. You mean Glory? You gotta help the killer. Now, Mrs. Harris, just try to calm yourself and tell us what happened. It was that man named Thorne. They were beating her. They? Who? Who's with Thorne? The man he works for. The one that wears the fancy clothes. Two men beating up on a girl? They rode out of town. Thorne had the girl. Adam, I was wrong about him. I'm sorry. Forget it, younger brother. Well, what do we do about the girl? We find her. Don't we, Pa? Yeah, we find her. Come on. Think I can run away out here? Thanks. Where's that line shack you were talking about, Thorne? Should be just over that hill. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I sure would like to get my hands on that Thorne. You get your chance as soon as we find the girl. Us? You think you can tell which way they're heading? Oh? If I read the signs right, it looks to me like they're trying to make the other side of Devil's Gate. You think so? Just the hottest, driest strip of desert in the Nevada Territory. All right, let's go. Now, this is Devil's Gate, isn't it, Thorne? Yeah, it sure is. Where's the shack? Just over the ridge. You sure? It wouldn't make much difference if I wasn't, would it, Mr. Burdett? Why don't you kill him, Burdett? Oh, where did you get that idea? I thought you were the biggest man in Virginia City. All right. Prove it. Kill him. I think you can do it, Mr. Burdett. You're right, horse. They're headed for Devil's Gate. Wait a minute, little Joe. You can't be too far ahead with one horse riding double. Adam, 
You little Joe, cut around that hill. Us and I'll flood the gap from this end. Sounds good, Pa. Come on. I should have known it. Now, why would I do a thing like that, huh? Come on. There's no shack there. There isn't anything there. Well, there's plenty of space. Long, dry, hot space. Want a drink, miss? Of course, it ain't none of that fancy whiskey like you used to have. I don't want anything from you. Good, because that's exactly what you're going to get. Is that what you were planning, Thorne, to turn her loose in that desert without water? She's the only thing between you and me making a real killing, partner. I'm going to kill you, son. And just how do you plan to do that, Mr. Burdett? You've got a gun, why aren't you using it? You look worried, Thorne. I don't remember you looking that way before. They'll kill you, you fool. You want to get killed? Very many men fool me, Mark. I didn't either. That's what's important to me. You saw what a fake I was right from the start. Not a fake. Just a man reaching for the moon. Or anything else a million miles away. A million miles. A million dollars. Same difference, isn't it? You coward, you fancy pants coward, you... He ain't good enough to worry about. Let him die. I said let him die. Let me go. Come in here and I'll shoot on the back. Let me shoot. Thorne can still kill the girl. Now you clear out of here. Clear out of here! Strike it rich, find a bonanza, and now he's dead. He found it. He found his bonanza. 
He found it just as he died. And that's better than never finding it at all. Isn't it? Yes, Glory, it's better. Much better. One place or another, there'll always be a mock vedette. And for everyone like him who makes it, a thousand will fail. But then, what a thousand to one odds for a man who looks up into the sky and sees a bonanza. Ponderosa, John. That means we'll be running into the Cartwrights before long. Well, let's hope you'll make out better with them this time than last. John, that isn't fair. Blake did the very best he could. Well, your brother doesn't always approve of my methods, Emily. Think you could do better, John? I'd like to try talking with them. They're people, same as you and I, I think. <laughs> oh, man, Cartwright and his three sons? Yeah, they're people, all right. Rough ones. Now, what happened between you and them? Well, we were partners, John. Partners don't pry, they trust one another. Are you implying I don't trust you? That's ridiculous. John, please, you're letting yourself get all on edge. Well, I'm sorry, Emily. It's just that I'm, I'm worried about your health. I need to get you into that high desert country without delay. Well, I think you better get some rest. What's the matter, McCall? You letting your love life interfere with your money making? Take my advice, you get rid of her and Pennington, both of them. There's gold here. Besides, she ain't gonna last much longer anyway. Krug, don't you ever let me hear you say that again. It's truth, ain't it? I'd say we were flattered to have the great Mr. Ben Cartwright pay us a call. Uh, my name is uh, John Pennington. Uh, we're on our way to that new mining area at Virginia City. We were told this was the best way to get there. Well, you were told wrong. You're on private property. Well, other people have come through here. They have. And they've slaughtered our beef, cut and burned our timber, and dug holes in our best pasture land. Are we to be blamed for the actions of other people? When you're standing alongside one of the worst offenders, yes. Now, we told you to get off last month, McCall, and we meant for you to stay off. Blake, what's he talking about? Very simple, Emily. The great Ben Cartwright thinks he owns the world. Now, just this part of it, Mr. McCall. Now, I'll ask you to get off my land. All of you. Please, Mr. Cartwright, if I may speak, uh, my name is Justin Flannery. My only purpose here is to obtain specimens of Sierra flora and fauna. You see, sir, by profession, I'm a botanist and entomologist. You see, sir, I only fell in with these people two days ago. Well, you made a very poor choice, Mr. Flannery. That's an unfair thing to say, Mr. Cartwright. You don't even know us. If my partner caused you any damage, I'm sure we can arrive at a settlement. I'm afraid we can't. Or can't I even reason with you? Mr. Bennington. Your reasoning became apparent when you introduced hydraulic mining to California. Oh, I've seen the operations of Pennington and McCall. Thousands of acres of virgin timber uprooted. Mountains washed away. Floods caused by the debris of your monitors. Orchards buried under mud. Us, see what you can do for them. Sure, Paul. You keep away from him. You ugly brute. Ma'am, I can't hardly help being ugly, can I? Hey, 
Ain't him hurt bad. Oh, Blake. Now, nobody could be as unreasonable as these Cartwrights seem to be. You must have done something to turn them against us. Well, you don't have to do too much, huh? Those Cartwrights turn against you. All right, maybe we did cut down a couple of their precious trees and Krug shot one of their cows. Believe me, it was an accident. He thought it was a deer. Well, that's the kind of accident we could do without, huh? Now, uh, be a little more careful next time, will you? Now, look, John. I don't tell you how to run the office. Don't tell me how to run my end of this partnership. Blake, I wish you two wouldn't quarrel so. Are you really in love with him? Well, you and he are all I have left. That's why I don't want any trouble between you. <laughs> don't worry, Emily. Blake and I get along fine. The main thing is to get you into that drier climate without delay. Now you go back in the tent and get some rest, huh? That's right, just get some rest. Two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. Don't exert yourself. Just sit and look pretty. John? Huh? Do you think there's any hope? Oh, of course there's hope. If you keep believing, you'll get well. Just as I have to keep believing, I have a right to love. I have to keep believing that, John. Because if I couldn't... I'd want to die. <coughs> well, Mr. Cartwright, I demand you allow us to pass through here. Uh, how is he, son? He's all right, boy. It's just a crease. Mr. Cartwright, why don't you answer my brother's request? And why are you so unreasonable? Why am I so unreasonable? Miss Bennington, I'd like to tell you about a friend of mine. He came across the plains with me. And all the way across, he nursed a wagon load of young peach trees. He had a dream. Wanted to plant an orchard in California. Well, I saw what was left of that orchard last year. Buried under a dozen feet of mud. Washed down by your brother's hydraulic monitors. Oh, I remember the man. I paid him twice what his land was worth. I, I paid for each of his trees. Well, just what price do you put on the dream of a man's lifetime? My brother has no intention of bringing hydraulic equipment into the Sierra. No? Then why is he here, Miss Bennington? No, I swear to you, we have no intention of staying on your Ponderosa ranch. Sorry, but I, uh, I find that hard to believe. See, the facts are, your partner has filed claims in some of the neighboring ranches. Ranches that contain watershed vital to the Ponderosa. Well, don't look so suspicious, John. The claims were filed in the name of the partnership. Well, we'll have to relinquish them. I don't agree. They're perfectly legal. We'll keep them and we'll work them. I disagree. Nobody is going to destroy the Ponderosa. Well, what do you plan to do, Mr. Cartwright? Stop every man who comes over those mountains? I'll fight for what's mine and what I believe in. And when a man who believes differently comes along, what do you do then? Kill him? If I have to. Pattern of history, Mr. Cartwright. A man with a dream goes into a country knowing he'll be killed. But after him come two more, and then two more. And the military are along to protect them. And then they build a fort to house the military. And soon they own the country. Yes, it's happened many times. Be careful, history doesn't repeat itself. Mr. Cartwright, can't you see your way clear just this once? Uh, I told you my sister wasn't well, and now we have a wounded man on our hands, and... Don't beg, John. You, uh, camp here until to... you rest up and get your stock in shape. Anything we can do for your sister? Save your concern, Mr. Cartwright. Blake, why didn't you tell me about these claims? Well, I meant to, John. I just didn't get around to well, it. You were supposed to be following through on that assay report in the Washoe. 
Now, John, we have as much right to this watershed land as Codright has. Do you know what hydraulic operations will do to these hills? I don't care what they'll do to these hills. I just want the gold in these hills. You'd do just about anything to get it, wouldn't you? Blake, why don't we just forget about it and go on to Warshaw the way we plan? Well, now, that's easy for you to say, isn't it? You and your brother both, sure, your father left you a mining company and a million dollars to play around with. Blake, what's got into you? Just this. I want to make it clear that the only thing my father left me was a bunch of debts and bruises on my back. What I got, I dug out of the ground with these hands, and nobody's going to stop me from digging out more of it. But it's not important. I've told you that before. It has nothing to do with you and me. No, doesn't it? What do you spend your time talking about? That fine mansion where you were raised, the servants you had, the beautiful horses. Well, you're the one that always asks me about those things. You say you like to hear about them. And you like to remind me that I never had them. Blake, that's not so. Well, Just a second. What... John, please. You said that you loved me. I do, Emily. More than anything else in the world, you're everything I've ever wanted. And those things don't matter. Just give me a chance to get well. And just give me a chance to be everything that you want me to be. <clears throat> Someday we'll have everything we've ever wanted. Well, you're gonna let old Ben Cartwright back you down, huh? Who says so? Pennington. You take your orders from Pennington? Well, now, you know, I was beginning to wonder about that. A few years ago, when I first knew you, there was no doubt about it. I took my orders from you. You still do. Oh, sure. Maybe when you two get married, you can use your wife's money to keep me on the payroll. That's more like it. You just say the word, boss. You just remember that. I'm boss. That's the way I like it. Boss. You know the, uh, the bug hunter, Flannery? He says he's going on alone. Yeah, I'll let him go. Well, I figured to. Except I was thinking, it'd be a shame if the Cartwrights should shoot him down on sight, wouldn't it? What makes you think they will? Well, you never can tell. Of course, if they did, it'd go kind of hard on them. Cold-blooded murder and all. Yep. There must be a lot of folks up here in these hills that don't like the Cartwrights any better than we do. Think what'd happen if they was to... Murder him, cold blood, a poor, harmless little old coot like Flannery over there. Come on, Christian, let's go. <clears throat> Think I'll take myself a little ride. Crew? Yeah. Where? In the Cartwright's front yard? See if we can make up for yesterday and dry some cows today. Right. Hey, Paul. Hmm? You got that bug, Hunter? Yes, it's Mr. Flannery. Do you want me to run him off, Paul? No, no, no. Cartwright, I must apologize for coming. Cartwright coming.
Flannery. He was walking toward us. And he was shot from behind. How'd it happen? An unarmed man whose only crime was setting foot on your precious ground. I wouldn't do that. You butchers. All of you. You're quick to accuse, Miss Pennington. But wasn't it you who mentioned about a man being sent into the enemy camp in order to be a known casualty? This was a planned murder. Someone here is guilty. Well, now, who do you think's going to believe you? If the decent people in this part of the country hear about this, they're going to ride on your place and wipe out the whole stinking Cartwright clan. Looks like you've got it all figured out, don't you, McCall? How would you like to start wiping us out right now? That's enough. Take their guns. What are you going to do? Kill us too? You're going back to California. All of you. Oh, you're drawing a pretty fine line on murder, aren't you, Cartwright? Now, we're out of supplies. I told you my sister's sick. And you're going to make us go back through that country without food and guns and our stock worn out? Oh, isn't that murder? Mr. Pennington, Paul wouldn't do that. <laughs> we brought along fresh stock and supplies by mule pack. I'm going to be riding along with you. You? As our guard? Well, no, ma'am. You see, I'm going to be going along to make sure no harm comes to you. Ma'am, <coughs> I wouldn't hurt you. Not for nothing. <coughs> can little Joe or Adam go along instead of me? We talked it out, Hoss. We think you can do this best. Yeah. Here? Ain't no use in making it any rougher on the lady than you got. Notice your partner ain't talking to you. Of course, I never could figure you and him being partners in the first place. Not that I blame you, none. You got some money out of it. Pretty girl. Krug, you're going to push me once too often. I am? I don't mean to. As a matter of fact, I wanted to talk to you about maybe working out a partnership on them claims you filed. What well, makes you think I'd want to share with you? Well, I was thinking about you and that bug hunter. I didn't kill him. Oh, I guess you didn't. You're just about as responsible as if you did. Well, you have to admit I do pretty well with what I have. Thank you. You, you could have a lot more. <clears throat> You'd be out in the desert, out on the way back to California. <coughs> you blaming me for that? You think it was my fault that Flannery was shot? No, I'm just a little sick of the way fighting and killing follows everything you do. Well, you and your pretty little world, all wrapped up in tinsel. How do you think I got that land we hydraulic in California? You sat back in your plush office when I went out there and fought for what we had every inch of it. Aren't you forgetting why we're making this trip? Well, didn't we agree on it? We both knew Emily had to get to a drier climate. John. <coughs> well, are, are you forgetting or are the things more important? <coughs> Can't you control that miserable coffin? <coughs> These fir branches will make a good bed for you, ma'am. You just put them in the ground with the, the needle end up. And you'll sleep a lot better. The smell of that fur will be good for that cough, too. Night. Boy, <laughs> well, got you some extra oats coming tonight. Long, hard climb we had today. 
You're going to feel a lot better since this old horse gets you all scrubbed down here. They, they like for you to talk to them. It makes them feel good. You really love horses, don't you? Oh, yes, sir. I like all animals. You can trust them. But you can't trust people? Well, I wouldn't say that. It's, it's just that some folks have got a, a natural mean streak in them that animals just don't know nothing about, I guess. What do, you expect, what do you expect me to do? That big moose could break your back with one hand. Yeah. Rough on men, but easy on horses. He pays more attention to the stock than he does to us. Yeah, I noticed that. Maybe if one of the horses was to go lame tomorrow? Uh, even if we could handle that big moosey. We still need guns and ammunition before we can tackle the rest of the Godrights. That foreman of theirs, uh, Jose Moreno, he don't live far from here. He'd have guns. What about Pennington and Emily? Well, now, that's your problem. Me, I'm just a simple man. All I care about is the gold. <laughs> see some mighty pretty country today. Matter of fact, if you'll look off right through the trees down there, you can see the lake now. Pretty, ain't it? That off horse over there's got a mighty tender mouth, so don't go sawing the lines too hard, you hear? Has gone lame. How long has he been lame? Oh, about a half hour, I guess. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, boy, looks like you picked up a stone. Either you get the guns from Marino your way, or we'll get them our way. Hey, Senor Hawes! My good friend, I'm so glad to see you! <laughs> Ay, caramba! The miners, they still dig like gophers down at the flats. Senor Hawes, is everything all right? Jose, we're going to have to be careful. I wouldn't. Well, you finally came to it, didn't you? Outright murder. I told you I wouldn't let anything stand in my way. It's the only way to fight the Cartwrights. Don't you see? I was only thinking of you, Emily. You never could think of anybody but yourself, Blake. And you never will. I'll stop you, McCall, somehow. I can handle that, boys. We're still partners, John, if you want it. No, I said I'd stop you. 
It's the last thing I ever do. Tie him up. Emily, I... Which horse will get back soon? It takes four men to replace him. Well, if you can't hold up your end of the work, brother, you know. Wasting so much time. What do you expect to find, anyway? Well, maybe you can see through a wall. Maybe you know how many guns we're up against. Of course, had a rifle and a revolver with him. If they took his guns, that's all they took. They took Jose's guns, too. They want us out in the open. They wouldn't have brought Jose's body to the house if they didn't. All right, Adam's right. Come on, let's get going. I'm sorry, I was thinking just about horse. Cut! Mighty unhappy, ma'am. What you need is a little loving to cheer you up. Should have tied the girl up too. Shall we go after him? Not yet. Let's see how far he'll get with a sick girl on his hands. It's all right, huh? I'm right here by you. Get you something to eat if you're hungry. The woods are full of good things to eat if you know what you're looking for. I just want to rest for a long time. Well, we we can't stay here too long. They're gonna be after us. I don't care. I, I really don't care. That ain't no way to talk. Let me help you, Miss Emily. Hate to see you hurting so, Miss Emily, that's all. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout at you. I can't hardly stand to see nothing hurt. It's as pretty as you are. Now, you stay right here. I'm going to take a look around.
no sign of them, but that don't mean they ain't right behind us. We must be on our way. You can't keep running forever. You carried me half the night. Why don't you rest a few minutes? I'll keep watch. Do you really think I'm pretty? I think you're real pretty. See me, I, I think you're as pretty as I am ugly. You're not ugly, Hoss. Forgive me for saying it. Please. Oh, it's all right. I, I've heard it before. We best move on. And by what right does a murderer like old man Cartwright tell you where you can mine and where you can't? This man, Flannery, he didn't even own a gun. And old man Cartwright shot him down! You want to know why? All right, I'll tell you why. Because the real gold strike is on the Panerosa, not in that blue stuff they've been running into over at Washoe. That's why Cartwright and his boys are willing to kill and not keep right on killing. Move in on those murderers. And get out of this blasted blue stuff and into the real gold strike. I'm with you, McCall. In fact, we're all with you. Right, boys? Yeah. <laughs> Working out better than you hope for, boss. Old man Cartwright and the two boys, and they're coming in alone. Oh, well, good. They'll never know what hit him. Come on. And bring my partner with us. <coughs> Horse, I'd like to explain to you about Blake McCall. You don't have to explain nothing to me, Miss Emily. You see, I only saw the good side of him. Well, I, I reckon that's the way it is sometimes. You, you look at a cactus and you see a rose, because cause a rose is what you want to see. I don't reckon there's anything wrong with wanting to see something good and pretty. Sometimes I even do that myself. I get sort of lonely-like, and I look for good and pretty things. What sort of pretty things do you look for? Well, if, if it's a springtime, there's this canyon I go to. It's plum full of dogwood, and there's a thousand blossoms on every tree. And there's a smell of the damp leaves in the air and the little ferns around on the ground. Sounds lovely. I was hoping you'd say that. Why? Because it's sort of a special place for me, and. Well, I'd like to take you there. I'd like to show you the little gold-back ferns. You, you press them on your hand, and, and the gold comes right off just like it started us right out of the sky. <laughs> I ain't never took nobody else there. But I'd like to take you. I don't think there's anything else I'd rather see. Miss Emily. I want you to stay right here on the Ponderosa. Hoss, don't you realize I'm very sick? I know that, but I want to take care of you. I want to take care of you all of my life. I couldn't bear it having you feel sorry for me. Oh, I ain't feeling sorry for you, Miss Emily. What, what I'm trying to say is that 
I like you. And I want... I'll be right back. What is it? It's Paul and Adam and little Joe. The call's got at least a dozen men down there. Paul and them don't stand a chance. I gotta stop it. Paul, you can't. You'll be killed. Miss Emily, I gotta. You can't go. Both old man caught right in his boys. like you have things under control. Yeah, reckon I suddenly lost my temper. All right, you clean jumpers. Get back to your diggings. It was McCall's idea, Mr. Cartwright. I didn't want no part in it. Get off this land, all of you. Yes, Move. sir. Yes, sir. All right, Teddy. Paul, wait a minute. Little Joe, you got it all wrong. Mr. Pennington here saved my life. Well, Pennington, I guess we owe you thanks. Thank you. Is Emily all right? It's fine. <coughs> we got to get a doctor for her. What's old Doc Riley doing up there? He sure has been up there a long time. She wants to talk to you, Mr. Pennington. Well, well, what did the doctor say? What the doctor had to say isn't really very important. Would you take that? Huh. I'd like to go back to San Francisco. What? Emily, you know what the doctor's there told you. This is a climate for you. Why, in three months' time, you'll be completely recovered. John, you know better. Oh, I don't know better. I refuse to give up. It isn't a matter of giving up. It's being able to face the truth. I had to face the truth about Blake, and I think that makes it much easier for me to face this. I'll find another doctor. Well, I'll do something. No, John. You've done much more than the brother should do anyway. I don't want to be a burden to you during the time I've left. I'm going back. Well, then I'll go with you. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to go on to Warsaw and to this new Virginia city. Just the way you planned. Well, you think I'd leave you? I want to go back today. Today? Why? You're in no shape to travel. Please let me do what I have to do. I'm not, I'm not really so brave, you know. It's just that I've accepted it. And I don't want to take a chance on tomorrow. Well, there must be something I can do. Yes, I'll tell you what you can do. Get my clothes from the wagon, because I want to look my very best. John, 
Please don't tell Haas. Wagon preem crossing the Sierra into California, and the wagon master's gonna meet us down at Truckee Meadows. You take good care of her. That'll be fine, Haas. Thank you. God bless you, John. She didn't have to go back so soon. I wish that too. Maybe I ought to go along with you. No. You need it on the Ponderosa. Boss, tell me about the canyon. I ain't so good about talking about it. The gold back ferns that you press against your hand. And the gold comes off. Just like it was stardust right out of the sky. Come back this spring, and it'll be there just like I told you about it. Will you come back? I'll take you there. You go there, Hoss. And when the spring comes and the dogwood's in bloom, you go to the canyon. And I'll promise you I'll, I'll be there. you, Hoss. been telling these people. You must have known Miss Pennington was very ill. Hoss, you quack. If you told her something... Do you think it's a pleasure for me to tell a dying girl she's got only one month to live? You're all lies. Paul, make them tell me they're lying. God's will, son. three women I loved. 
You, Ma. Adams. And his. For a while. It's a hurt you have to bear alone. Stand, God. You gotta help me. Huh? Plenty to do. 